Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're going to look into magnetism in IGCSE physics. So here is some of this very simple fact that everyone would know. When you put north, two north or south poles together, they repel each other. When you put the opposite poles together, there's an attractive force between them. So that's something characteristic of a permanent magnet. So, but this, have, knowing this, we can understand how a compass works. So if you look at the compass here, they are basically made of a freely moving needle, which is a magnet. Because opposite a prac, the north pole of the magnet will point to the south pole of the earth magnet. What it's saying here is that if you look at this earth here, there is an internal magnet that's located at the core of the earth, which causes the needle to react in that way. So that's just some general knowledge on how compass work. But when it comes to magnetism, you need to understand the following items, which is all the materials on Earth, they can be categorized into magnetic and non-magnetic materials. Magnetic materials can be attracted by magnet and can be magnetized. There are two types of magnetic materials here, meaning if something is a magnetic material, they could still either be a hard magnet or a soft magnet. Let me explain. Hard magnet is a material which is once they are magnetized, it's very difficult to demagnetize them. So one example, which is steel. And they are used to make permanent magnet, compass needles, loud speaker magnets. Um, this makes sense because you don't want your permanent magnet to suddenly lose um, its ability to attract stuff. So that's why hard magnet is used. Whereas the other type of magnetic material is called soft magnet. It's a material that once it's magnetized, it's also very easy to demagnetize them, such as soft iron. They are used very widely and as a cause for electromagnetic, which is a type of magnet that can be turned on and off. So that's all about magnetic material, whereas um, the other materials like plastic, rubble, which cannot be attracted even if you put a magnet um, nearby them, they are called non-magnetic materials. So um, the concept of in this magnetism, we'll further explain the difference between the different magnetic materials. So in this magnetism is when a magnetic material is only magnetized when they are in the magnetic field. For example, this magnet here, it, surrounding it, there is actually magnetic field. So when we put a magnetic material like a nail nearby it, they, it will be able to attract the nail. So in other words, we say that now, the nail is magnetized. However, if you were to remove the magnet from the nail here, because now the nail is no longer in the magnet's magnetic field, it is now demagnetized. What can you say about this nail? This is a soft magnet, or in other words, um, a soft magnet in the magnetic materials. Whereas this um, magnet here, even if the nail is removed, it will still be magnetized, then this magnet is a hard magnet. So there are ways that you can demagnetize a magnet. You can either hit it or you can hit it with, you know, a hammer or anything you can find. So which of the following materials could be used to make a permanent magnet? To make a permanent magnet, I need something that will not get demagnetized very easily, meaning I need a hard magnet. Um, the hard magnet material will be steel here, so which is something I put as my example here, steel is a material, a hard magnet material. So next question, the student line up some permanent magnet with soft iron nails in between as shown in the diagram below. What would be the pole of X and Y? So we know that this is a hard magnet. They will have their own poles already set defined, but iron nails is a soft magnet. So it will only be magnetized when it's placed in the magnetic field. So we know that magnet is going to attract iron nails in this scenario. For them to attract to each other, the X here has to be of the opposite pole of the south, meaning X has to be north pole. Whereas on the other hand, um, let's, in the second diagram here, since the south pole is over here, this has to be north pole, and Y will therefore have to be south pole. So the answer will be X equal to north pole, y equal to south pole. So my answer should be B. Okay, so let's go. Um, previously, we mentioned the term magnetic field. It's good to let you know what they are. 
A magnetic field is a region of space around a magnet or electric current in which a magnetic field pole experiences a force. Uh, the way I say it is, is that it is a territory which um, it can magnetize certain materials. So if I were to put a nail, you know, outside of the magnetic field of this magnet, the nail will not get attracted to the magnet. But if I were to put in a nail inside the magnetic, within the magnetic field of this magnet, it will get attracted. Okay, Simil uh, I think I showed this in the diagram here. And there are two things we can observe from a magnetic field. First thing is that the field line come out of the North Pole and go into the South Pole. So you can see that there are magnetic field lines here and the arrow is pointing from the North Pole to the South Pole. And we also notice that there are certain areas in which the magnetic field line is very close to each other. This represents a very concentrated magnetic field, meaning a stronger magnetic field. So lines that are closer together here in the magnetic field represent a stronger field, meaning they can attract heavier or bigger objects. So there are two ways that we can observe the pattern of magnetic field. You can ask your teacher to show it to you, but you can also watch some YouTube videos to see how they do it. First thing is the iron filling method. So you, if you were to put iron fillings around this magnet, you're going to see this pattern because iron filling will only get attracted to the, um, on, on the magnetic field. So um, that's the iron filling method. The other one is plotting compass. We know that magnetic field line going out from the north to the south. So you will see that when you align the plotting compass in this way, you're going to see the direction which the magnetic field operates. So here I have pre-drawn some of the uh, magnetic fields here. That's for interacting magnetic field. That means the magnetic field when, that you have when you put two magnets together. So the fixed example, I have like, um, unlike poles, meaning opposite poles. I like the north facing the south pole. So you can see that the magnetic field line should go from the north to the south. From north to the south, from north to the south, and from north to the south. And for the other two poles here, you can see that because magnetic field line goes out of the north pole, this has to be going out, going in the outward direction. Whereas for the south pole here, the magnetic field is entering this pole. So um, another example is when we have light poles, meaning I put two north pole together here. So because magnetic field line goes out of north poles, you can see that they actually won't touch each other. That's what's creating the repelling effect when you put light poles together. And there's an invisible force that separates them that prevents them from going, getting together. So similarly goes to the North Pole and moving inside South Pole, the same thing here. So that's how you can draw an interactive magnetic field. Um, you do need to learn how to draw it. Please pause the video to learn to draw it because there are some of the questions in the IJ exam that emphasize on this. So let's look into this question. On the diagram, draw an arrow on each of the three plotting compass. And since you can see that this plotting compass, the direction of it is moving out of this pole, moving out of this pole, means that I know that this should be the north pole of the magnet, and here should be the south pole. And the magnetic field looks like this. So from north to south, oops, so I'm just gonna draw it and the arrow should be pointing this direction. North to south is the same in this direction, moving into the south pole. So now what they ask us is, can you draw the direction of this? So what we can do is just follow the direction of the magnetic field, because this is what the plotting compass will do. I'm gonna point in this direction, whereas C will point towards the south pole, and B will point towards the south pole too. So this is my final answer and I'll get two marks and then label the magnetic poles, which I have already done. So the only thing that give us clue is this arrow, which tells us that this is the North Pole of the magnet. So that's the answers. So now let's look into one of the interesting topic in magnetism called electromagnetic. We won't go very deep into this topic. Um, we'll talk more about it when we go to electricity, but just know that an electromagnetic is a coil of wire that acts as a magnet when an electric current passes through it. And so 
we have something called a solenoid here. So what a solenoid is, is basically just a coil of wire. And the theory behind this is that when electricity flow in a coil in wire, they create magnetic field besides it. So it's a natural phenomenon. So if you were to coil all the wire together and then let the electric current flow into it, you create a magnetic field around the coil of wire, which is also known as a solenoid. And that's the cool thing about electromagnetic because once you switch off the electromagnetic, you stop the current flow, the electromagnetic will then lose its magnetic field. So in other words, you have created a magnet that can be turned on and can be turned off. So again, some of the observation uh, is that this is we, for electromagnetic, there is also a magnetic field and the field line come out from the north pole to the south pole and the field line that are concentrated here represent a stronger field and the spread the magnetic field that are more spread out represent a weaker field okay so there are three ways we can increase the strength of this electric magnet first is that you increase the current flowing in it second is you increase the number of turns of wire to make more current flow in that particular space Okay, and the one is to add a soft iron core, which will for which is something that can be magnetized and demagnetized easily. Soft iron core is basically a soft magnet. Okay, and the advantage of using an electromagnet is that it can be turned on and off. And I think that's all about magnetism. We look into how compass work. We also look into the magnetic field of the different magnets. So. That's the end of this video. I hope you learned a lot from it. Please comment down uh, if you have any doubts. Um, I'll see you on in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.